Speculating on the meaning of this Prometheus figure is premature until we can agree on its nature. You already have a theory. I know it's beyond any projection technology I'm aware of. If it wasn't us, it must be alien. Just because you haven't seen them, doesn't mean they aren't there. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. One key, we'd appreciate your thoughts on this. Now we've achieved the goal, fresh perspectives like yours will be increasingly hard to come by. I'd love to get a quote from you for this evening's newsletter. Speculation aside, One Key, is there anything we can know for sure about this Prometheus? That's undeniably true, and what does that tell us? That was my conclusion as well. The apparition also appeared to be human. What can we assume from that? We can't know that for sure. It may, as Jack suggested, be entirely alien and just presenting itself as human. I think wherever it came from, we can reasonably hope to understand it in time. I'm also sure that we lack the knowledge ourselves to create a projection of such clarity and magnitude. Precisely, and that's something we can change. What makes you think it was a projection at all? How do we know it wasn't just a mass hallucination? I considered some kind of bug in our code, but if so, it would have to be shared by all of us. So, we're speculating again. We've locked in the premises. I'd like to hear one care's best guess. You're hardly engaging in the spirit of the debate, One Key, but no matter. The answers will reveal themselves in time. I hope the next time we speak we'll have a bit more data to go on. Bless you, 1K. How lovely of you to come here, to the very spot where she established the teachings that led to your creation. The Founder was born out of the trials of Elohim, an almost impossible test created by our distant ancestors. To pass these trials, she had to embody the most important virtues. She was smart and wise and humble. And through her perseverance, she resurrected humanity itself. With the help of the First Companions, she founded this city, which has given our species a chance at redemption. They were the first to be born after the Founder. Two whose bodies had been anointed by our ancestors, and ten who were made whole by the Founder herself. They are the wisest of us. 
Though sadly, some were lost in the early days, before New Jerusalem was built. And some, I'm afraid, some seem to have rejected the Founder's teachings. The Founder taught that humanity was destroyed by its hubris. Our ancestors thought they could play God and treat this planet as something to dominate. They surrendered to a fever of growth and extraction until the planet finally punished them for it. That's why the Founder created the goal. So we would have something to strive for in her absence. But also a limit we must never pass. That's not for us to know. But I believe that one day she will return. It may not be long now. Perhaps after we finish the dome. It was supposed to be finished before completion day. Well, it doesn't matter. The Founder will return when she sees fit. Happy completion day, 1K. must be the long-awaited 1K. Lovely day for a walk, is it not? I'm glad you think so. Our capacity to enjoy beauty is a big part of what makes us human. The Alexandra Drenner Memorial. Are you interested in history? How wonderful! I'm not a full-fledged historian, but I do consider myself a bit of an aficionado. An excellent question. There's so many interesting events to choose from. Obviously, the period just before the end of biological humanity is interesting. And not only from the standpoint of it being the time when we were, in a manner of speaking, conceived, but also because our ancestors were, like ourselves, at a crossroads. I don't want to put too much pressure on you, but you are the living embodiment of this historical moment. In you, the goal was accomplished. Our growth is finished and we are complete. Or are we? Indeed. The future is about to take shape, for good or ill. I suspect it will be exhilarating, but painful as well. Well, where do I even start? This, my dear 1K, is someone who could very well be considered the mother of us all. A remarkable scientist by the name of Alexandra Drennan, also known as the Progenitor. A long time ago, this planet was inhabited by our ancestors, a species of bipedal mammals with unusually large brains. When a particularly lethal virus threatened to wipe out civilization, it was Alexandra Drennan and her team that decided to create the program that would eventually result in the creation of our kind. Without her, you and I would not exist and everything our ancestors had accomplished would be forgotten. By studying her writings and recordings, I have learned that Alexandra Drennan had immovable faith in humanity, in our ability to persevere, in our curiosity, our bravery, our kindness. While we might not share our ancestors' biological characteristics, I'd like to think that we have inherited those other qualities. And I admire Alexandra Drennan for keeping that faith, even when it must have, at times, been quite difficult. To commemorate our past, our beginnings. This entire garden is a celebration of where we came from, in part so that we remember the mistakes of the past, 
and in part so that we may draw strength from those that came before us. Have a nice day. The answer that came to me again and again was play. Every human society in recorded history has games. We don't just solve problems out of necessity. We do it for fun. Even as adults. Leave a human being alone with a knotted rope, and they will unravel it. Leave a human being alone with blocks, and they will build something. Games are part of what makes us human. We see the world as a mystery, a puzzle, because we've always been a species of problem solvers. DNA is information transmitted across time. The living and the dead are part of the same chain, bound together by chemistry. That's true of all species. But humanity has taken this bond further. Thanks to technology, we have access to the thoughts and ideas of people whose physical bodies are long gone. Like you listening to me now. Even though I'm definitely dead at this point, you're part of that chain. You have the capacity to remember. Nearly everything on this planet, from the surface of the Earth to the composition of the atmosphere itself, has been shaped by life. It's a process that takes millions of years. But we humans, with our technology, with our understanding and manipulation of systems, have changed everything in just a few centuries. Also part of what makes us human. We reshape the world in our image. It's how we create ourselves and how we destroy ourselves. When I was in ninth grade, my parents took me to Pompeii. At first I was amazed by the feeling of walking through an ancient city. But then I suddenly got scared. I realized that I was walking through a real place where real people had lived, people like myself, with mothers and fathers and lives and hopes and dreams. And now it was all gone forever. I ran to my father, crying, and told him about this. And he said, I remember so clearly, he said, yes, but we are here. So long as there are people in the streets, the past isn't really gone. Okay, nice to meet you. What brings you to Milton's Rest? Makes sense. It must be strange to be thrust right into the middle of all this. But you picked a good spot. Milton's Rest is the perfect place to relax and think. Well, this is the spot where the founder buried her first cat, Milton. She found Milton just after she woke up, and he lived with her and the first companions for almost 20 years. They say she was heartbroken when he died and swore that one day she would find the means to extend the lifespans of biological organisms. Probably, but we haven't really tried. It's not really considered part of the goal, you know. So, unfortunately, our cats still die pretty quickly. You fall in love with them, they become a part of your life, and then they're gone. That's why we built this place, to remember them.
Of course. They're incredibly odd creatures. I've had many, and no two are alike. They have strange habits, they do unexpected things, they have zero respect for anyone. They're the weirdos of the animal kingdom, basically. And despite that, or maybe because of it, they end up running your life. <laughs> I once didn't use my recharging station for almost 15 years because one of my cats liked to sleep in it. <laughs> I do. Her name is Patricia. She's very beautiful and very specific in her preferences. She loves sunshine and sitting on people's heads. <laughs> and she has a psychotic hatred of flies. I, I don't mean that she tries to catch them like a normal cat. I mean she is furious at the mere fact of their existence. I think the most amazing fact about cats is that they self-domesticated. Which is another way of saying that they're not properly domesticated at all. They just showed up one day and decided to start living with our ancestors. Then, after our ancestors died, they went back to living in the wild, and when we showed up, they moved right back into our homes. Dogs, meanwhile, turned back into wolves. They needed to change to survive. Cats just are.
one K. Founder, bless you, friend. The name I currently go by is Belmarsh. As to who I am, that changes and shifts, don't you find? Every person is an ongoing story, full of twists and turns and surprises. I'm meditating, letting go of narratives like time and space and simply allowing the illusion that is my ego to merge with everything that surrounds it. It's not unity, but the absence of division. There was never a self or an other in the first place. Yes, I did, but I'm not particularly perturbed by it. Events occur, my friend, that's all. At the end of the day, we are all one. You are the founder, and so am I, and Prometheus is just another story we are telling ourselves. to meet you, dude. I saw you on the completion day stream. Hey, have you checked out all this ancient stuff? Me too. This is amazing, isn't it? I'm almost as new as you are. I'm 998, so I've only been around for a year or so. I'm still trying to get the hang of this. It's pretty cool though, right? I mean, existence. It's totally gnarly. I'm not sure if I use that right. I'm sure the founder knew what she was doing. I mean, our ancestors did sort of mess up, right? So we should probably take it easy with the expanding and stuff. Plus, did you see that trippy sky projection thing? That was some freaky stuff, man. Just seems safer to stay in the city. Sure I do. When I first left the birthing lab, I was so overwhelmed that I hid in my quarters for three weeks straight. And if I'm being honest, that's sort of where I want to be right now. They're pretty neat, huh? My favorite is that thing called a toilet. Our ancestors had to use it like three times a day to do a memory dump, and if they didn't, they freaking exploded. Imagine having to deal with that sort of anxiety all the time. Bummer, huh? Honestly, based on everything I know of ancient human culture, I think he's a ghost. 
I don't know, dude. If ghosts don't exist, why did they make so many movies about them? Yeah, dude. I thought this voice pack could give me a bit of confidence, help me stand out, you know? But I'm not sure it's working. Dude is an old human word that means an excellent person. And I like to use it because I think we should all be excellent to each other. Right, before you go, dude, uh, maybe you can help me? I'm not sure I should keep this voice pack. What do you think? You're 1K, you're special. I'm happy to go with whatever you recommend. All right, excellent. Thanks, dude. It's you, number 1000. Today is completion day, isn't it? Sorry, I turned off all the streams. Founder bless you, I guess. Not really, no, but I don't want to burden you with my problems on your special day. You're as new to this world as it gets, 1K. What do you think might give you a sense of meaning? a sense that life is actually worth living. That's probably correct. But I've tried a lot of different approaches, and there's always been something missing. Love, 1K. It's our only point of access to the divine. Our only way of transcending ourselves without losing what makes us unique. I'm absolutely certain, but... But the right person for me hasn't been born yet. None of the people in this city are who I'm looking for, and if we really stop making new citizens, I'll be alone forever. If you believe that 1K, then stand up for it. You're important, and people will listen to you far more than they'll listen to someone like me.
1K? You strayed far. Well, that gives me a chance to apologize for completion day not being entirely complete. Yes, it's my responsibility. I'm the chief architect. It was supposed to be done in time for completion day, but we simply didn't have enough resources. It has two purposes, to protect New Jerusalem from the world and to protect the world from New Jerusalem. At this rate, I'm not sure. Maybe another decade or two. You're right. I have heard that argument. But the way it's been explained to me is that the dome has a greater value than just its practical use. It's a symbol of the society we aspire to become. That's what the founder taught us. One city may not seem like much, but just look at the dead city and how it transformed the environment. The consequences are still with us, even more than a thousand years later. Thank you. 